In this panel, we will dive into the incredible potential that health data holds and explore how the European health data space can act as a catalyst to maximize this amazing value. Our panel experts will discuss about ongoing initiatives to streamline the change of health data across the whole Europe, an approach that promises to improve research, policymaking, and patient care, while, of course, very important again, ensuring privacy, security, and ethical use of this data. Let me introduce for this panel Mr. Eugenio Gaeta, Senior Researcher at Life Supporting Technologies from Universidad Politecnica de Madrid and Platform Manager at Gatekeeper. He will conduct this amazing panel. So, Mr. Eugenio, the floor is yours. Welcome. Hello. It's an honor for me to be with you today. And uh, I am Eugenio Gaeta, and uh, I was architecting uh, the Gatekeeper uh, platform uh, with uh, the help uh, and the knowledge of uh, all the other technical partners that without them should not be possible. And I'm here with uh, Mr. Edmundo De Salvo, that uh, is uh, an AI specialist uh, at uh, Evelet Parkart Enterprise, uh, with uh, Catherine Kronaki, that is the Secretary General uh, at HL7 Europe, and uh, Professor Dimitris Fotiadis, uh, that is a professor at the University of uh, Ioannina and one of the biggest uh, player of AI in research. Um, so, uh, just uh, a second. I will, uh, uh, this session is uh, about uh, the relation that Gatekeeper uh, has with uh, the incoming regulation that was presented before, that is the, health, the European Health Data Space. Okay. Uh, as we have seen before, uh, this regulation will uh, drastically change uh, the way to use health data in Europe. And uh, we need to be prepared. With Gatekeeper, we was be prepared before. And we have a lot of uh, commonality with the healthcare, the, Europe, the EHDS. And uh, from our experience and less certain, we have a lot of recommendations to give. Okay, so, uh, at technical level, we can imagine a gatekeeper as a trusted research environment where interoperability for primary and secondary, secondary use of data is promoted and enhanced. Okay, in order to develop novel AI services and exchange those services, and furthermore, we are able to uh, completely manage the interoperable data life cycle. This is very important because not uh, in all uh, the, the IT solution for health we are able to perform this activity with standards, okay? And uh, in terms of recommendation, the major recommendation that we can uh, give to European health data space uh, are uh, security best practice, uh, our uh, interoperability approach, and uh, why we should bet on fire for uh, the European data spaces, how to make that primary and secondary data can dance together. That, uh, that is uh, a, another challenge that we have addressed, and uh, how we can facilitate the exchange of AI model and compiled services. Okay, now let's go a bit in detail on each one of these. Uh, DevSecOps, uh, in the modern era of IT technology, uh, deployment uh, of services 
is IDE coupled with the, the underlying infrastructure. Okay, so we need the, uh, a, a, a secure way to put security in the pillar of every artifact that we deploy on, uh, on top of the infrastructure. And uh, the approach that uh, Gatekeeper is promoting, uh, that is uh, about the DevSecOps, is uh, a must that every IT infrastructure needs to follow. And uh, in Gatekeeper has been tested and uh, has been very useful uh, to make uh, that every healthcare center uh, could trust in Gatekeeper solution because with this uh, security pipeline building, uh, we are able to address uh, every breaches, uh, every vulnerability before they happen. Okay. So this is a first uh, very important recommendation for EHDS, but uh, in general for uh, every modern AI, uh, IT systems. Second, uh, fire. We are uh, uh, at the beginning uh, of the project. We was uh, a very early adopter of fire in Europe. And we have seen uh, that we made uh, a very uh, good choice uh, on uh, the standard that we use uh, for our project. Because FIRE is not only providing you uh, a common data model, it's much more than that, because uh, it provides a lot of flexibility to add new operation. It provides uh, a common uh, interface, a standard interface uh, for... Uh, sorry, I'm losing the microphone. <laughs> Uh, a standard uh, interface uh, for, uh, for uh, uh, data access uh, and uh, data provisioning. So this is how we are able to take all the entire uh, life data, life cycle data management. Because of not only have a standard data model, but we have also standard services interface. Uh, this is something that the uh, European uh, Commission already understood, because within TEDAS, uh, that is a, a, a preliminary initiative, uh, a coordinated action uh, to start with the uh, European healthcare data space, uh, FIRE has the best uh, um, score in the common assessment method, method for standard and specification. Uh, the, the third one, how we make uh, primary and secondary use of data dancing together. We have defined the platform that is basically two main components. One uh, that is uh, the Secure Interoperable Transactional System, or LTP, and the other that is the Analytical System online <coughs> Uh, analytic processing system, system designed for massive data manage, management uh, that provide us the ability to capture the data with the OLTP system and the ability to process the data with the OLAP system in a continuous way. So we are making that primary and secondary use of case uh, use cases of data are always merged together, okay? And this is uh, another uh, important recommendation that we want to give to, to European health data space because uh, at the moment uh, there is a lot of decoupling uh, between uh, the primary use of data and the secondary one, okay? And uh, last uh, but not least uh, is the ability that we have uh, to create a network effect with the Gatekeeper platform, enhancing it with the interoperable AI services. How we do that? Thanks to FIRE. Because in FIRE, we have the flexibility to define a new operation. So if we use as input and output for AI services FIRE resources, we are able, for every services that we build in the platform, to add new services into the platform and enhance its functionality with the simple usage of it. Okay, and uh, that's all for uh, my side. And now I would leave uh, the floor uh, 
to my panelist uh, and first one uh, to Edmundo. Edmundo, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. In our understanding, uh, the healthcare today, it's uh, experiencing uh, two main areas of, uh, of problems, of the difficulties that uh, uh, produce a declining of the experience because uh, in the end, uh, it, uh, this is uh, still an environment where we have a fragmented system, uh, records, uh, a multitude of, of devices uh, and uh, source of data. And at the same time, uh, from human, uh, space, uh, there is a, a, a serious problem because large organizations are practically understaffed and uh, in, the case, uh, in the period of COVID uh, we, we saw the, the serious impact of, uh, of stress on this organization. And at the same time, the, uh, the, uh, the capability to increase the, the resources is quite limited because the budget of the of the, of the government that uh, cannot grow as, at the same speed as the demand would require. The, there is another big challenge, the, the, ch the change the, of the mix of the services that the citizens and the communities expect because uh, the, um, the aging of the, of the population that uh, require a transformation uh, of, the, of the offering of services and consequently of the infrastructure and solution and services to support them. And new, uh, new infection, COVID is uh, just an example, but probably in the future we will experience much more. From the technical perspective, uh, we are at the nexus of three mega trends. That is not uh, specific uh, for, um, for the, the health care, but it's imp impacting any digital transformation or whatever is the industry. The age where a new service a source of data uh, emerge day by day. And uh, it, age is also the place where uh, the data and the information and the insight is consumed. The data by, the, by themselves. Uh, we, we have to deal with uh, the, the typical uh, multiple V of the big data, the volume, the veracity, the value, the, the, the velocity, velocity of production, of the velocity of consumption of the, of the data. And the cloud that uh, introduced new architecture, that on one side uh, it's uh, an, an advantage for uh, the intervention and accelerator, but at the same time it represents a challenge for people and for organizations that have to integrate into a new context, uh, technology context. And last but not least, security, it's, it's a critical uh, aspect to, the, to take care because uh, the data, it's the data of any of us that we uh, are uh, included, are considered, are managed, and uh, no, one, uh, no one who wants to leave every, anybody to, uh, to sniff inside. Federation, it's federation, integration, sharing, it's the way to overcome many of the, of the problems. And uh, uh, the federation, it's at, the, at a different level uh, in terms of infrastructure, in terms of sharing of the data. In terms of uh, federation and integration and sharing of the model for the, for the analysis of the, of the data. Different architecture, centralized and decentralized, are uh, on the stage. HP, uh, and uh, this is the foundation of federation, sharing uh, and capability to exchange uh, knowledge, data, models, uh, to create uh, an effective collaboration and integration, uh, the capability to interoperate one-to-one, uh, one-to-many, many-to-many citizens uh, and patients with the uh, hospitals, the specialists, uh, but also other actors uh, like uh, pharma and diagnostic organization that are part of this large and complex ecosystem. HP is involved in more than one project and the initiative about creation of the condition for federating data and models and so experience. Gatekeeper, you know, all the people talk, uh, talk about this today, so I will not 
boring you uh, with the other words. But uh, there are other, in other programs like GAIA-X, another uh, European Union initiative for uh, creating a hub uh, um, for uh, uh, different uh, industries. Healthcare is, is not uh, at the top priority uh, today for GAIA-X, that uh, it's uh, a great implementation of uh, data spaces. Currently, the focus is on manufacturing, on, on uh, agriculture, on retail, but it's in the roadmap. And uh, with the light eye uh, project, that might be an opportunity for integration with the gatekeeper experience, could be one of uh, our next area for a lighthouse. And swarm learning, this is a, a federated model. Uh, uh, developed uh, totally by HPE in collaboration with uh, institutions like uh, uh, research centers, uh, hospitals, uh, to create uh, a pure decentralized system that uh, uh, enable uh, crea uh, creation of a model without uh, moving the data, without mo uh, moving the, the models in the central system and uh, uh, able to run on any type of uh, technology, I mean in terms of hardware, uh, totally practically at the edge. The only information that are exchanged are the hyperparameters of the models that uh, are exchanged between uh, the network of, of the nodes. In principle, Gatekeeper might be a, a node of this uh, type of application, and there is another project funded by European Union, Odelia, that it's totally adopting a swarm learning model for, uh, for investigation, for example, of the uh, breast cancer. The commitment of HP in healthcare is not limited to the project that I showed before and the, the, the initiative like uh, swarm learning, but in our portfolio for a, a solution for healthcare life science industry, we, in collaboration with partners, we, uh, we offer enter, uh, electronic healthcare record solution uh, with a HEPIC, uh, PAX system for uh, medical imaging uh, offered in as a service model with the Cumulo, and for uh, the area of research in collaboration with the Flywheel, we, we, use, uh, we propose to the customer a system for uh, the analysis of uh, image uh, and uh, especially dedicated for, uh, for research. Now thank it's... You, thank you. Uh, and now I would leave uh, the floor uh, to our colleague Catherine uh, that Please, Catherine. Uh, will give us... Uh, uh, is, uh, she Hello everyone. Uh, I'm delighted to be part of this celebration. Um, I'm Catherine Kronaki, and I'd like first to start with a little bit of the vision of HL7, which has been actually part of the vision of Gatekeeper. It's a world in which everyone can securely access and use the right health data when and where they are needed. HL7 is old. It's almost 40 years old, and it started with a laboratory trying to transfer data from the labs to the wards to save money. And it made a very large cycle. It followed the trends of technology. Uh, it followed the, um, uh, the HTML with the clinical document architecture. And then now that we are speaking about APIs, it's the life of fire. And indeed, I need to repeat uh, the, what uh, Giuseppe said earlier about the brilliant architect of uh, Gatekeeper. He was quick to realize he was agile, and he actually, he actually adopted FIRE very early on, even diverting from the actual text of the proposal in some cases. And I would like also to recognize Engineeria. I don't know who is there from Engineeria, because they actually implemented things. And then my colleague, Giorgio Cangioli, who actually created an implementation guide. And Roberta Gazzarata is now doing a, a, a survey on the actual use of fire, and we see that Gatekeeper was one of the forefront runners. Gatekeeper ignited innovation in more than one ways. So HL7 uh, Europe, since uh, it's already 10 years old, it has the mission to create and, um, uh, and 
promote the best and most widely used uh, standards in healthcare. And uh, now the, the world is on fire. Uh, so what we need to do is create the specific uh, standards for Europe that meet the requirements of Europe, but also in connection with the global developments. Uh, so what we do is we collaborate with entities and Gatekeeper has been such an amazing marketplace, such an amazing innovation ecosystem where you could see things happening. It, it has been an amazing journey and it hasn't finished. So just to um, illustrate a couple of things that uh, are uh, striking in what has been achieved in, uh, in HL7 through Gatekeeper. Uh, the first one is, um, uh, is actually the first implementation guide we developed, the Gatekeeper implementation guide. And, and this actually was then brought to the international level uh, to align with developments in the US. Based on the survey that Roberta led, we saw that since then there are about 36 implementation guides that are looking into chronic disease management in HL7 fire. So this is an amazing ignition of innovation that the gatekeeper is responsible for. I would also like to highlight another activity that was linked to gatekeeper and that's hospitals on fire. It started from within gatekeeper and the idea was to see how um, hospitals can work together to share best practices. This was actually one of the highlights we saw in the opening. And how to mature together, find common interest and find common solutions. One very big problem, for instance, is within the area of security and trusted data. And how you, as you said earlier, how do we bridge the part of uh, the care with the part of secondary use. So what's next? So Gatekeeper actually ignited an amazing uh, project and, and in some ways we follow this route together. It's called an XR. It's part of the uh, ecosystem of projects in the health uh, data space and the European Electronic Health Record Exchange format. And the idea is very simple. You give control back to the people, and that was part of the portability clause in, uh, um, in, in GDPR. So you give the opportunity to people at the click of a button um, to share uh, their data. And they can share it once, or they can share it for a period of time. Like you share your location on your popular apps on your mobile. So we have the XR button, and uh, the idea is that we want to demonstrate the link between primary and secondary use, but actually we want to uh, demonstrate the link between continuity of care, uh, between uh, population health and uh, uh, clinical research. So we are looking at three traditional uh, separate, in many ways, sector where there are, have been efforts for many years now to create bridges. Bridges from electronic health records to clinical trials, for instance, or bridges like we saw in COVID uh, between primary care and uh, dashboards that show you how the population is doing. So this is what we aspire to do. And how we want to do it, we want by design to bring six different uh, standards development organizations together to work and align constantly on specific uh, information types. But the most important things that is triggered actually from Gatekeeper, and I, uh, this is also a call for your engagement, is this industry label. I mean, we know that the, in the European Health Data Space Regulation, there is the idea that electronic health records should be certified about their ability to share data. But I think the biggest bet here is with the industry. And that's where Gatekeeper was fundamentally innovative in bringing that marketplace together. So the idea here is to create an industry-driven label that is supported by standards organizations. And this, I think, is our biggest bet to make Europe the center of uh, innovation in AI. So, you heard the earlier how, um, how Gatekeeper created this trusted ecosystem. 
Excel is taking this step forward, and it says we want the industry, we want the policymakers, we want the business use cases, and we want to align through different perspectives. And that's another type of uh, a compass. The health system perspective, the industry perspective, the personal perspective, and last but most important, the workforce perspective, the health professionals, the uh, informal caregivers. So there, we need to create some virtuous cycles of co-creation, governance, and alignment. That's the new idea that uh, Gatekeeper ignited. Uh, it's a big project. Uh, you see here the different standards organization. Digital Europe actually will be getting paying on the bet of the visibility of this industry label, the XR label. I hope you hear more of that because that would mean that we have made more progress in, uh, um, in moving Europe forward. And last, my last slide, I'd like to invite you to my home country, Europe, Greece. Not my home place, I'm from Crete, in Athens, in, uh, in January, to continue the discussion. We are actually doing uh, the first uh, fire marathon, and one of the projects, uh, there will be different tracks. Uh, one will be on the lab, the first implementation guide in the URI realm under the European Health Data Space and the e health. Um, uh, a European electronic health record exchange format, but also there will be one marathon on cancer projects and also, of course, the International Patient Summary. And the last one, uh, that's the, another project we share with uh, UPM, that's the Gatekeeper Project and Hackathon. So please join us. Thank you. Thank you, Katerina. And uh, now the floor for Professor Fortiadis. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Eugenio, for inviting me. Thank, thank you very you much for inviting for me in this here. fantastic event and in this fantastic place. And fantastic people, okay, because places without people do not mean, mean anything. Now, uh, I'm coming from academia, I'm a university professor, but, uh, you know, dealing with uh, the European health data space, we have to understand why we have created that, why we have this idea behind that. Uh, to my opinion, is to create evidence for the medical device industry, the pharma industry, and then go one step further to innovation. And how you can create evidence, having the data, having the cases, having the annotation, to see how you can use all what we're discussing here and Gatekeeper developed, you know, during uh, the project duration. If you go to something that uh, it was initially presented by WHO, the World Health Organization, and made by uh, medical doctors mainly, you can see that uh, they published a report on data quality regulatory considerations on AI for health. This is a 2023 report. And actually, they insist on data management, data inconsistency, data set selection, curation, data usability, data integrity, model training, data labeling, documentation transparency. Basically, all those keywords refer, you know, to what we call the European health data space. And actually, they create the requirements for that. And we have to have representativeness of data, we have to create data quality and data standardization. So all those things uh, go together and create, you know, what we call the European health data space. The European health data space is not just a space that satisfies some requirements, but we have to cover all of those requirements. Special attention must be given to the data. And when we're speaking about quality of the data, is to understand why in our AI solutions that are produced in the lab, they are produced in the company, are valid, are robust, and so on. Because we have to have geographical and center coverance and so on. On the other study, okay, we have to design and implement studies. And from that, to get data, to obtain data, to bring the data to the European health data space, 
But of course, you will see in my last slide that we need another piece of work to be done before going to that. And of course, in the secondary use of uh, the data available in this European health data space, we have to uh, go to, uh, to perform research innovation to provide better health growth, uh, better health care through, uh, through uh, those innovations, and of course, better policy making. Those are the three pillars that we have to use, um, uh, you know, uh, when we're speaking about the European health data space. And you can see a lot of applications that already were discussing here. And when we're coming to those conferences, you know, usually we're trying to transfer a vision on how we can uh, support these applications and actually use the data from those applications that they are produced, you know, in a virtual or on a realistic manner. But of course, there is something which is very important on that, and we have to discuss the roles. Uh, this is the health data access bodies, the functions and the directions that we have with the health data space. Actually, you can see what are the roles in the middle of this uh, transparency here, and then you have on the left the data user, you have the data holders on the other way, may be a little bit different, this terminology from what we have met in GDPR, you know, for the processes, the controllers, and the owners of the data. But actually here you can see most of the operation, and actually when we're speaking about health data space, we're not speaking about free data. The data might not be open, might not, not be open, but also they have some cost in order to provide the data. And actually, all those here are going to uh, present it, you know, in the middle as functions and directions that those bodies have. And actually, we're speaking about public metadata catalog, which is public because they are metadata and we have to know what we have to do. We can handle applications, we can provide a secure processing environment, as Jade did, and then to see the compliance, setting and penalties for the data, plus finally the public reporting, which is very important for our healthcare systems. Of course, you know, speaking about data, always we have to ensure security and interoperability, and those are the key challenges that we have to be very careful. Legal aspects, data quality efforts, technical interoperability of infrastructure, security, and of course, public engagement towards data sharing. I'm sorry, I'm starting from the last one because I promised that somehow we have to show a type of altruism. And I'm calling this data altruism, to donate the data to this, this space. Usually when you're going, you know, to a patient, uh, he refuses to sign an informed consent, which is somehow suspicious for him or peculiar at least. So we have to work with, uh, you know, the public and actually to, uh, to convince them that we respect data protection regulations. Of course, the others, I think that we have analyzed very well uh, those uh, here, but always we have to keep in mind that in order to proceed with whatever we're doing about interoperability and standards, we have to discuss with organizations like AMA and transfer, you know, most of the responsibilities to EMA and then changing somehow, to my opinion, to go to the American system, which is a governmental body, FDA, and to avoid so much, you know, uh, you know uh, interference with private bodies as we're doing in Europe. Uh, because this will change a lot uh, the, uh, what I'm saying at the last point here, uh, the trustability that uh, the people have to these public initiatives and public working health data spaces. Thank you very much. We can continue with the discussion. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Fokiadis. And uh, now, uh, after your talk, I have uh, several questions uh, for you. I will start with uh, Edmondo that uh, uh, give us uh, a very interesting uh, overview of uh, the federated uh, approach uh, and uh, the, the way that uh, we can uh, uh, preserve privacy while processing data. You mentioned uh, 
architectural model such as Gatekeeper, Gaia, Gaia, Gaia X and Swarm Learning, that I think they, are, uh, they will be largely adopted in Europe because I know that uh, the European Data Space Regulation is already promoting uh, the, the federated uh, approach of data analysis. My question now is, uh, how do you see to this uh, model a wider uh, contest uh, outside the European Union? Well, indeed, uh, swarm learning is already adopted uh, uh, outside the European Union. It was born at HP Lab, so in the US, and currently there are uh, more than one project that are involving a European and not European organization. Odelia is uh, an initiative in, in, in European Union and it's funded in the, with the same pro program of Gatekeeper. But the, there are other projects that are in, involving uh, American, UK, Canada and uh, Far East organization that are uh, investigating a sp specific disease. Odelia is uh, for breast cancer. But there are other uh, diseases that uh, are investigated by different research centers around the world. So, uh, there is nothing to invent, <laughs> indeed. It's uh, already uh, available, uh, this type of collaboration. The, uh, clearly, this is also a demonstration that the barriers like the legislation, or the difference in the legislation can be resolved uh, because the technology is already there, I believe that it's a matter of a willingness to overcome the barriers and to establish profit, uh, proficient type of collaborations. Talking about <coughs> these barriers, in uh, HP experience uh, with uh, healthcare industry, which are the factors that you see are slowing down uh, the adoption of uh, such data and AI solutions? May I be provocative? It's the human factor. <laughs> it's, the, it's a matter to, to overcome the, let's say, the, the mental barrier of many, of many actors in the, in the scenario to share, to uh, change the way to operate my, recently, I had a discussion with a pathologist, and they told me, well, artificial intelligence. I trust much more into the opinion of my colleagues in the analysis of the images instead of a, a, a system AI, based on AI. Also because I think that people perceive AI like not, not necessarily because it's a young, um, technology, but as a risk to their job, to cancel their job. And so the, 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 the automatically, like in, in any other industry, the management of change represents an important factor mm -hmm. to, to accelerate and expand the adoption of the, the artificial intelligence and, generally speaking, advanced technologies in the, in the industry. It was the same uh, I remember many decades ago in, uh, in manufacturing where people were seeing a robot as an enemy because they destroyed my job. Yeah, I completely agree with, uh, with you. Of course, cost, uh, resource, technology are other elements, but the technology we can, we can manage, we can handle. The people are hard to handle. The people are hard to handle, <laughs> it's true. It's true. Uh, Thank you very much. Uh, as the My time pleasure. is short, uh, I will uh, go to the other panelists. And uh, Catherine, for you, what are uh, other key contribution of Gatekeeper to European health data space uh, in, uh, from your point of view and from your experience? I think I think we. I, I was amazed when I, I heard uh, that Samsung has created already 46 fire profiles and they plan to launch uh, 15 new services. This was wow. But I think what what is the key element is something you said that uh, 
we need to make sure that we can uh, develop um, algorithms that have uh, specific inputs and outputs based on HL7 Fire so that we can raise the level of trust um, in, um, in, uh, in, uh, in AI or in processing of the data. But I do feel uh, on, on your comment there that we need to move one step further to clarify a little bit more what these AI uh, algorithms are doing, what these models are doing, so that we push the envelope on the explainable AI a little bit further. I think this is key. It has started with, uh, uh, with uh, the gatekeeper, but I think we need to do more on that front. Maybe Idea for RC, which is a project you are leading, will push this envelope further. But I think more work is needed to somehow um, uh, demystify this, uh, this AI, AI algorithm space. The legal people have understood it and they raise a lot of questions, but I think their questions are very broad and they are in some ways not technically meaningful. So we need to bring um, uh, some bridges between the legal, at least the legal people that see uh, the law as an enabler. And, and essentially uh, make this happen. Because this is the key for Europe to be, uh, to be competitive in the space of AI. Okay, I completely agree. And uh, I have another question. Uh, mm. Now more related uh, to your uh, other initi the initiative that you mentioned, uh -huh. the X share button. Yeah. I remember that when we was writing uh, Gatekeeper, we was basing the one of the key aspects of Gatekeeper, the, the trust building, the building of trust, on a US initiative called it the Blue Button. Yeah. Uh, from your presentation, I see a lot of similarity with uh, this Blue Button. Now, my question is, what are the differences between XShare and uh, the US Blue Button initiative? Thank you for this question. Uh, I'm, I'm very excited, as you may imagine, about uh, uh, the XAR button and the industry label. Um, the XAR button is different and, in, of course, conceptually, it has some links to the Blue Button Initiative in the Meaningful Use Program of the uh, United States about 10 years ago. Uh, I think our difference is that we have the European Health Data Space as a policy uh, background. And uh, we are not thinking only about transitions of care. So I go to one doctor, they give me uh, my report and I take it to my GP, no. We are looking at ways to follow uh, data altruism once or uh, in a continuous manner. So establish the environment so we can, we can actually share our step count or our blood pressure or our heart rate in a continuous matter, and that would be donation, and that would power a algorithm, because we heard earlier that it's the power of being able to process multiple variables, much more than the seven or eight that our mind can fill in. Eh? We cannot manage more information than seven or eight uh, facts at the same time. That's what the doctors do. But if you have an algorithm that can manage 150 variables, you are awesome. Yeah, so this is the difference. The difference is that we have the European Health Data Space and we want to make bridges from uh, primary use of data in health care or health and care and uh, population health through dashboards, something well, which I hope you will help us with, and also um, in, in clinical trials and, um, and clinical research in general. So I'm, I'm really excited about this potential, but also I'm thinking and hoping that we can have a, another GSM uh, success in Europe uh, with uh, XR. Thank you for Thank this you question. very much, Catherine. And uh, I'm sorry, but time is short, and then let me also uh, go to our Professor Fortiadis. Uh, professor Fortiadis, you, uh, in your presentation, uh, uh, give us our view on uh, research and relation with the HDS. Me, I, I'm also a researcher, and uh, I uh, identify a lot in your presentation. And uh, as a researcher, are mainly the user of European healthcare data space, 
how do you envision the collaboration that need to be established among researchers, policymakers, and industry to develop together the health European data space? Okay. Uh, I will bring uh, to you another aspect of what uh, we are discussing, and this is uh, humanism, humanitarian aspects. Because when you are an academician, you have to deal with people. And as I said before, people make the difference, not the machines, not the AI algorithms. So academia, first of all, let's go to the basics, should train people, should train in all those things that we are discussing. Interoperability, standards, applications, whatever we have developed. And this is how we can create, let's say, the critical mass to support all those activities. So this is the first one. The second is research. research. We are doing a lot of research and we are producing a lot of algorithms, you know, new ideas, concepts, and so on. And then we go and say, I have created this fantastic thing, but, you know, I am a, new, a young guy like you, and I would like to go and create my own uh, small company and uh, bring that to the market. How can you bring that to the market? I mean, without data, without evidence to create and support what you will produce and take the MTR approval. How can you go? So this is another link. And of course, there is another third link, which is related to the amount of data produced on the bench, in the labs. We're producing a lot of data in industry, uh, in academia. There are, you know, big facilities there, and we have to donate, again, this data somehow to the European Data Health Space for the others to do the work. And now I'm going to the other side, the industry, the people from standards and so on, who will do, you know, the development of new applications and so on. So this is the link for me, three links. I understand, I understand. I have another question uh, uh, also for you. Uh, what are the opportunity and the challenging that uh, you foresee uh, are fostered by this uh, collaboration uh, of the acad academia and uh, the other stakeholders uh, towards the European healthcare data spaces? Yeah, I think that, you know, the opportunities now, I, I think that I mentioned the three pillars of this, uh, you know, link between the European the academia and the European health data space. I think that uh, somehow here, you know, uh, for me, uh, you know, in academia we have very old curricula sometimes, and we have to remake those curricula and bring all those ideas to them, bring the examples that we have produced. Why not using Gatekeeper as a food, uh, good example to train people, to teach people, to learn more and to go to the next step, because they will create ideas, they will build on Gatekeeper, they will bring new concepts, new air, fresh blood, as we say in academia, and go to the next steps. So this gives, I mean, a very nice collaborative environment where we can build. Young people build the future for, uh, will build the future for Europe. New ideas will bring the innovation, will bring the competitiveness in Europe. Otherwise, without having that and without having the data available to us, we cannot create the Europe of the future. Yes, I completely agree. And uh, I would uh, thank you, all of you, for uh, your participation uh, and uh, and your talk uh, and your vision. And uh, I would uh, close uh, the session now with uh, a personal recommendation toward uh, the European healthcare data space. I expect that uh, this new incoming uh, way to manage data will not block uh, our uh, way to perform or to do research uh, and uh, will uh, spread out and uh, make it widely adopted uh, and uh, facilitate things for us uh, and not to add the complexity. Because uh, if we add the complexity, we will be back in uh, the world uh, against the rest of, uh, of the country. So 
This, uh, I think, it's a, a general recommendation that does not come only from, uh, for Gatekeeper. And uh, I think that uh, that's all uh, for uh, our session. Uh, time is time. Uh, we cannot fight against it. And uh, thank you very much again uh, for, uh, for your participation. Thank you. Thank you, thank you everybody.